All right, hello, everyone, and welcome back to Cutabo Space Program, where today we are having a look at the MEV Heavy Industries mod, which is being made by form user Sign. And what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is four awesome and gigantic new engines for you to enjoy. And I've very much been having a lot of fun with these so far. So let's uh, jump into the vehicle assembly building and have a look at what we do get. Now let's go ahead and grab a Mark 1-3 command pod for size comparison's sake and turn on our mod filter just just leaving on MEV Fusion Tech. And of course, being an engine mod, go to the engine category where we have our four gigantic new beautiful engines. Though before we look at the first one, I do need to mention a mod requirement here, and that is the Interstellar Fuel Switch mod. Now technically, according to the mod page for this, it's not 100% necessary, but some of these engines do use non-standard fuel types, and they do include some fuel on the engines, but if you want bigger tanks and larger tanks for, you know, long-term space missions, you're gonna want Interstellar Fuel Switch to have additional storage tanks for that resource. So, good times. Now, with that out of the way, let's take a look at the first engine, and that, of course, is the Bussard Drive, a glorious and massive engine producing quite a lot of thrust at 1,080 kilonewtons in vacuum with an ISP of 1.5 million, once again in vacuum, using liquid hydrogen as its propellant. And this thing also does have a battery holding a thousand electric charge as well as a fuel tank holding a thousand liquid hydrogen as well as a new strange battery for megajoules. And it holds 200 of those. Not entirely sure what those get used for, but hey, you got 200 megajoules. Good times. And for some reason, this engine also has a data transmitter. Good times. Extra little transmitter on your ship. Very nice. Now the next engine, and an even larger one, is the Daedalus Drive. This thing is massive and produces 7,540 kilonewtons of thrust in a vacuum, and only in vacuum. This one does not work in atmosphere at all. Its ISP, similar to the previous engine, is 1.5 million, though this time using a propellant of fusion pellets. Very nice. Now, this also does have a battery holding a thousand electric charge, a fuel tank holding a thousand fusion pellets, as well as a liquid deuterium tank holding 195 liquid deuterium, and a liquid helium tank holding 805 of that. Now, this has a built-in resource converter, which will take that helium, deuterium, and electric charge to produce its own fusion pellets, very cool. Again, has a megajoule battery of 200, as well as, once again, a data transmitter. Very nice. Now, the next one we have is the Epstein Drive, a much smaller engine, this time without a data transmitter. And this one, though being smaller, produces a heck of a lot more thrust of 15 thousand kilonewtons in a vacuum with an ISP of 1.2 million using good old-fashioned liquid fuel and oxidizer. And here's the fun thing on this one. Yeah, that's the low-powered mode. You can burn even more fuel to get 20,000 kilonewtons of thrust in vacuum, though this time for just an ISP of 900,000 compared to the half a million for the, uh, or uh, yeah, 1.2 million, sorry, for its ISP on the low-powered mode. But a very nice engine nonetheless. And finally, we have the smaller Epstein Drive, again having two different power modes, the high power powered mode, producing 7,500 kilonewtons of a thrust with an ISP of 1.3 million, again using liquid fuel and oxidizer, and the high powered mode on this one producing 15,000 kilonewtons with a half a million ISP, that's what I was thinking about with the last one, getting a little confused with these different engines, but a fun one there. Now let's actually uh, grab these and pop them onto this to uh, show their size. Oh boy, they're large. And and we'll actually start with, I believe the Daedalus is the largest one of these, and um, boom. That's a big old engine. A big old engine. 
<laughs> I believe it's uh, five meters in diameter and is just a freaking massive and does have a couple of different truss variants on this thing. So you can change up the styling there. Honestly, the truss one default, I think is my personal favorite. Now then with the Boussard, yes, a little bit smaller, but very similar in design. Really just the big difference being these uh, lines across there and the top of the engine is a little bit more inset inward. But again, having those different truss variants right there. Now, the next smallest is the Epstein Drive. There we go. This one uh, still in that 5 meter category for the main connection point. Again, having a couple of different variants here. A no bow tail, a bow tail, and a blank one. Very cool. Which, you know, with that one, you could probably easily fit that onto a 2.5 uh, size one with no option or with no issue whatsoever. Very neat. Very neat there. And finally, we have the smaller Epstein Drive designed for, you know, the main sort of regular 2.5 size. And this one having no variants to speak of. But all of them very nicely made. I do love the detail, especially on the, um... The Bussard drive here, all the little internal bits there. Very nice detailing work on that. I do very much enjoy it. All of them looking uh, very nice, though. And, of course, massive. I love having massive engines. There's just something cool about them. So let's uh, jump out into space real quick and show off at least one of them in practice. They all have a pretty standard particle effect, you know, nothing too crazy about them. So I've built a ship in space with the Daedalus drive because even though it's not the most powerful, that would definitely be the Epstein drive. The Daedalus is my favorite just because of its size. I love a good gigantic engine that I can make a gigantic ship with. Granted, the one I made, you'll see her in a moment. Not gigantic. This is way, way too small of a ship for this large of an engine, but it makes me happy. So let's actually keep that on prograde there, because yeah, with this size of thing, oh boy. I did find though that, you know, typically when you have like RCS engines, you can't really put them onto normal engines, but I found that you actually can attach them radially down here at the bottom. So I've got four RCS thrusters in there helping out, which is very useful again when literally half the length of this ship is the engine. It'd be real bad if I couldn't put RCS down there. So that was a neat little find on these things. But let's fire this engine up and throttle up. As you can see, like mentioned before, a pretty just standard particle effect there. But super powerful, and we are probably already... Oh, yeah, we are. We are going to the sun. Quite easily. Nice. Look at that gloriously powerful engine. And again, despite being the largest one, surprisingly, this is not the most powerful. I'm still flabbergasted at how much thrust you can get out of the Epstein drive with 20,000 in its high usage mode. A very cool there. And all in all, just a neat little set of engines providing you with some fun new opportunities to build with. And of course, lots of great power for you to send your ships to the stars. And with uh, the power of some of these, could work quite nicely for any uh, nearby solar system mods. That would be pretty cool indeed. But again, do remember to get yourself interstellar fuel switch so you can have things like this tank here is holding more fuel pellets. Uh, this one's holding some um, liquid helium, I believe. This one down here is deuterium. So, you know, nice to have all of those in there. Very nice indeed. But that is going to be it for this episode. If you would like to check out these engines, which I would certainly recommend you go and do, you can have a look at the link in the description, as per usual, my friends. But that is going to be it for this. Hope you have enjoyed. You do come back for the next. But until that time, thank you for watching. And as always, have a good one.